competitions. So uh, what do you think would be a good example of monopolistic competition based on what you've seen in the market? Like which, uh, what types of, what industry would resemble this the most, do you think? So I'll give an example, but if you think of any examples, let me know. So I would say that the, the cell phone industry would resemble this because the products are a bit different from each other. They aren't, they aren't exactly the same, but they're a bit different. Like with, uh, there's like Samsung, Apple, they're very different. They're a bit different from each other. Uh, they have different brand names and they have some price competition like Apple iPhones are more expensive than Samsung phones. So that would be uh, a good example of that. And then there's small market shares, like not exactly with that industry because Apple and Samsung take up most of it. So that would be the only thing that doesn't line up. Yeah, e um, so yeah, e cars. Yeah, that's probably good because uh, that's a good one. Can uh, the uh, so with Tesla, Ford, GM, uh, Rivian, all the ones together, uh, they all have different bit uh, difference in how they look, how they work, their their brand names, and they some of them are priced a lot higher than others. And then they all have like Tesla has the highest market share, but they're but the rest have small market shares. And ten B clothes, yeah, clothes would be great. That's that's it. It's probably the best example because all the all the clothes distributors and manufacturers they have small market shares. The clothes are a bit different. They have different brands, like let's say for But yeah, so it's like Calvin Klein would be the top in terms of output. So companies cannot uh, restrict output and set prices to maximize profits because there's it's too competitive. And then it's easy to enter and exit in monopolistic competition. There's not high barriers to entry. Uh, however, it's not as easy to enter and exit than the perfect competition market. So the economies of scale are few, capital requirements are low, compared with perfect competition, financial barriers may result from the need to advertise a different product from the ones of rivals. There's non-price competition in advertising, firms demand curve shifts, the right becomes less elastic. So the demand curve of each firm is highly, but not perfectly elastic. It is precisely this feature that distinguishes monopolistic competition from monopoly perfect competition. So the... Uh, the demand curve for each firm is highly elastic for uh, monopolistic competition, but per but it's not perfectly elastic. Perfectly elastic is only for perfect competition. So, it monopolistic competition is not perfectly elastic because it has fewer rivals and the products are differentiated, so they are not perfect substitutes. And then, how do monopolistically competitive firms maximize profit or minimize loss? So they set margin revenue equal to marginal costs for this to happen. And then uh, there is, uh, so there's entry and exit in the long run. So firms enter a profitable industry and exit an unprofitable one. So if, if the monopolistic competition industry makes profits, then there will be firms entering. And then if they're not making profits, firms will exit. And when we talk about profits, it includes explicit and implicit costs. So cash costs and costs of missing opportunities. So costs of not investing in something else, not, uh, so we include costs of not investing in something and we include costs of, of we include costs of uh, missed opportunities too. Yeah, yeah, I can I'll upload these PowerPoints. I will, uh, I'll do that. Yeah, 
I'll do that. So the so the monopolistically competitive firm, it'll produce at marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So this is where uh, profit is maximized. So this is this is where profit is maximized. And the profit will be calculated through so the profit will be calculated through uh, determining the area of this rectangle here, because we got to find the the distance between demand and average total costs, and then find this area. So this would be the this would be the profit here. So we, we calculate the area of this rectangle as the profit. And then this is the total cost. So we find the area of this rectangle, we'll find total cost. And then this whole, this, like, if we add profit plus total cost, it's total revenue. And in this case, when average total cost is greater than demand, uh, it's a loss. So when average total cost is greater than demand, it's a loss. So that's up there. And then when average total cost equals demand, there's no profit at all. It's like in this case, uh, in this case, is no profit. And then persistent profits may persist when there is continuing and significant product differentiation. So uh, there has to be constant innovation. So that that's very important. And then also if there's barriers to entry in terms of financial investment, uh, there's gonna be a lot of profits being made. So are there any companies that you can think of that have constant product differentiation and there's entry limited by financial investment? That's correct. Yeah, iPhone's a good one. Yeah, the it would take... It takes a lot of financial investment to make iPhones because they make them at Foxconn in China. And also, yeah, they're constantly innovating iPhones. They're constantly improving them, changing them, making them better. Yeah, that's great. That's great, Mohammed. Excellent, excellent uh, answer. That's great. So they can make profits in the long run, and Apple makes a lot of profit. So, uh, Firm constantly manages price, product, and advertising, better product differentiation, better advertising. The consumer benefits by a greater array of choices, better products, types and styles, brands, and quality. So with, with uh, so monopolistically competitive restaurant markets, so like McDonald's, Burger King, Harvey's, uh, Wendy's, all those companies together, a higher wages favor them over the mom and pop operations. So like, single places not chains so because uh they these big chain restaurants like mcdonald's are capital intensive so an increase in the minimum august 17th and then you'll have these quizzes to do for for bonus marks and also practice uh tenaz what's your question excuse me professor august 17th or august 18th uh, so I'll check. So, I, so, so it is, so, yes, August 18th. Yes, you're right. You're right. Sorry for that. I, yes, this is August 18th. Yes. So August 18th will be the final exam. 
thanks for Claire. Thanks for letting me. Thanks for uh, bringing that up. So. So the test next week, it's all multiple choice. Yeah, it'll be all multiple choice. Excuse the purpose of multiple choice? Yes. And uh, can I ask you how many questions? It's going to be 50, 50 questions. 50. And um, pro uh, it, uh, it has problem question or multiple choice? Multiple Thank you. So yeah, it'll be almost choice, and uh, a lot of it will be based on what uh, the practice that I just posted. So uh, in the chapters for uh, the test. So we're gonna go through oligopoly, uh, and. And then, so oligopoly is very, it's a few large producers, so it's concentrated market power. Uh, and the products could either be different from each other or the same. So it depends on the industry. And then they have control over price and they, they're high entry barriers. So the oligopolist industries are, the industry has to have, uh, like, it has to be made up of almost of four or more companies. Uh, for like four or more companies need to, uh, four companies need to control at least forty percent of the industry. So, like, basically, forty percent of the industry is controlled by four companies. Basically, then, so. A good example of this is Rogers and Bell and Shaw in Canada. We saw that there were a lot of problems with this because of the outage on Friday. That Rogers, they operate Interact and they, they the outage happened on Friday where um, we weren't able to get our service from Rogers and we weren't able to make calls or call them one and Interact wasn't working. So this is a problem with oligopolies. Can you think of any other oligopoly, any other oligopoly market in, uh, in Canada or worldwide? Uh, good question. So TTC, it's actually, uh, that's the TTC is actually a nap. It's a monopoly, but it's, it's, a uh, it's a public monopoly. So it's owned by the government and, uh, they provide transit to everybody and there's no competitor for uh, subway bus and streetcar service to them, but they're, uh, yeah, they're a monopoly operated by the government airlines. Yeah, airlines, yeah, I would agree. Airlines are an oligopoly uh, because there's very high barriers to entry and there's only a few carriers and they can work together to um, set prices to maximize profits for all of them, which is called a cartel. So that's great, Tanvi. That's really good. So the, uh, but good try, good try, uh, good try, Infaz, uh, the TTC one, good try. That's, that's close. Um, so games, so the, so Prisoner's Dilemma is like, basically this shows how companies operate against each other to like, to win, basically, like they operate against each other this way to compete. So like these two company, like these two people in this case, they they both they both compete against each other to get the best payoff for their for the, themselves, and that's so here uh, two firm oligopoly. Uh, they could price higher, price low, and 
the profit each firm earns will depend on the strategy it chooses and the strategy its rival chooses. So if, so like, that's very important because like if one rival, if, if rare air reduces prices, then uptown will have to reduce prices too. To compete. So that, that's important, but like if rare air and uptown both choose to increase prices to maximize profits, they could create a, hotel, a cartel to maximize profits. Um, however, one firm could cheat and lower their prices to be more competitive, take business away from the other, which happens. And this is called uh, this is called predatory pricing, and then it's called predatory dumping when one firm reduces prices to take competition away and then raises prices when the other company goes out of business. Um, so predatory dumping, predatory pricing, and cartels are legal because they're anti-competitive. Because they are anti-competitive. However, it still happens. They just have to be under the radar with it and not let people know or draw attention to it. So that's important. So in this case, if you do prisoner's dilemma, here uh the what happens is they both price high to start as a cartel so they both price high here this right here they're a cartel um so they they price they they both price high to maximize profits as a cartel then one firm cheats and the other cheats because they want to steal market share from the other, then they both have low prices at the end because they both want to steal market share, or steal customers from each other. So based on that, they'd end up at the they'd end up here. So they'd end up here because they both they both uh, lo lower the price to compete. So uh, mutual inter interdependence. Um, oligopolistic firms can increase their profits and influence their rivals' profits by changing pricing strategies. And then collusion. Uh, they may collude. So they might they might collude through establishing high prices. So they both they both uh, keep a high price so they can maximize profits. So I'll ask everybody. I'll ask the class. Um, can you think of an industry where they uh, where companies uh, they both where companies set a high price, um, and then they set a price a high price across all their all the companies to maximize profits? Can you think of an industry like that? They also so there's they also can just keep their prices high and make an agreement with and not with the other company to keep their prices high. So yeah, they could they could either yeah here so they describe the pricing strategies here. So collusive pricing is keeping prices high in the industry to maximize industry to maximize profits, and then price leadership. Uh, reducing price to take customers 
away from the other company. So that, that they can do either. They have two choices. Uh, so then collusion occurs when a firm's in an industry reach an agreement to fix prices, divide up the market, or otherwise restrict competition among themselves. Then the danger of non-inclusive oligopolies that a price war may break out, especially during a general business recession. So a cartel is a group or firms of nations that collude and collusion is illegal in Canada. So the, so collusion uh, happens with oil. So uh, they set prices as a, as a cartel in the oil industry. So they set prices very high because they want to maximize profits across all oil companies. So the LPEC nations produce about 34% of the world's oil and 31% of the oil sold in the world market. So it's basically a car, uh, it's basically collusion because it's close to the 40% required uh, for collusion. So um, it's very, it's close enough to uh, be a cartel. So they're, they're setting prices uh, as high as they can to maximize profits in this case. So obstacles to collusion. Uh, so it's hard to allow for collusion because of demand and cost differences. Like some companies, it costs more. Like a uh, number of firms, they also they cheat. So some firms reduce prices to compete. Um, some firms have higher costs. Um, there may be too many firms and they cannot coordinate a cartel agreement. Uh, there may be too many entrants. There, there may be too many new entrants, therefore increasing competition. Also legal obstacles, collusion is illegal in Canada. And difficult to do legally because it can be done legally i would re i would honestly i would honestly say that uh bell and rogers do it legally um so bell and rogers do collusion illegally legally um uh like i would say so um like you know uh yeah it's pretty anti-competitive so they can get around it uh, yeah. So price leadership. Practice involves whereby the dominant firm initiates price changes and all other firms more or less automatically follow the leader. Price leader strategies need frequent price changes, communications, limit price. So oligopolists would rather, they don't want to compete on the basis of price. They, because they won't make any profits when they're competing on price because they'll lower prices enough to make no profits. So they'd probably be more more wanting to do price collusion because they can maximize um, profits instead of just making no money. Um, so it's, it's uh, yeah. So then uh, pause, so advertising can provide information to customers in a low cost way, promote com competition, enhance technological progress and uh, provide economies of scale. However, advertising can be manipulative, have misleading claims, and then um, customers can pay for a higher price product uh, without paying for a lower price product. So um, companies that, um, these companies are, um, the top 10 brands, Apple, Google, Coca-Cola, Microsoft, IBM, Toyota, Samsung, General Electric, McDonald's, Amazon, the top 10 brands because they have the highest market share. They're, they appeal across many different age groups and nationalities. Uh, there's a lot of brand loyalty. And then the, br the brand stretches to other products except instead, like not just their main products. And then oligopolies are inefficient because um, so oligopolies produce uh so they produce lower than what's what's needed in the economy so they produce basically here uh so 
Um, so they're not producing as much as the economy needs. So price level and then real GDP is here. And then this is where this is where an oligopoly produces. And this is supply, this is demand. So here, uh, this, this triangle area is lost because of an oligopoly. So like here, like this is efficiency lost due to an oligopoly. Um, so they're not producing, so they're missing out on, so they're missing out on this, this area of production. So, so this whole area here, this whole amount of production, this is, this is lost because of an oligopoly. So oligopolies produce oligopolies produce much, produce less than efficient outcome. Yeah. So in this case with Dramco and Chipico, they, um, they, they do a cartel in this case. They, they don't do price leadership, they do a cartel. So they just keep prices high and they don't, so they just stay with the cartel because they, they just want to maximize profits. They just want to maximize profits. So they stay as a cartel. So they stay as a cartel. Slash collusion. Um, and then if they want to, if they want to compete, if they want to compete, in this case, they don't want to compete. But if they want to compete, um, they do price leadership. They want to compete through lowering price. Oh, wait, sorry, I made a mistake on this. Apologies. I apologize for this. Uh, it's just switched around. Sorry, but um, I'm just going to redo this. Sorry. So actually, um, I'll scratch all of that. Sorry about that. So I, was, I wasn't reading the numbers. So here, the... Uh, they actually choose to be price leaders. Um, it's just the other way around. So, like, um, so they choose to be price leaders here, price leadership. So they they compete based on price. They don't want to maximize profit. They cheat. So they don't want to maximize profit. But if they were here, they'd be wanting to maximize profit. Like here, they would want to maximize profit. Include such cartel. So credible threats, threats that are believable by the firm, can establish close agreements, can generate higher profits. An empty threat is a threat that's not believable for rival. So repeated game is a game that recurs. That happens a lot with competition. So it like they keep c competing on price. They keep lowering price, keep lowering price and trying to compete. So this happens with Coca-Cola and Pepsi, Boeing and Airbus, Walmart and Target and Nike. Keys. So yeah, sequential games are similar to repeated games. And um, yeah. So this happened, so with um, the internet, the internet has oligopolies, so uh, some some companies dominate the internet and they're highly competitive oligopolists. So uh, Google, Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, and Apple, they dominate the internet right now and uh, they compete for advertising dollars and good Google account prices. So, I think I will sh like all so then to close it out, we'll do this here.
Chasing that A and want to save time on proofreading? Grammarly makes editing one click simpler. Hey, how you doing? This is Mr. Clifford with ACDC Econ, Key Economic Concepts in 90 Seconds. We're talking about oligopolies, right? We're talking about game theory. Then take a look. Your teacher showed you something like this with the prisoner's dilemma. Now we're applying the same concept but with profit. So before we start the clock, take a look. Here's what you're looking at. Here's two competing firms, ACDC Taxi and Clifford Taxi, right? And there's two firms in the market, therefore it's an oligopoly, and they gotta worry about the pricing of the other guy, right? Mutually interdependent. Good, Clifford Taxi has two things they can do, maintain their price or lower their price. ACDC, same thing, maintain price and lower their price. These numbers in here tell them how much of profit they're gonna make, right, based on what the other guy's gonna do. In this situation, the numbers on the left are Clifford Taxis, the numbers on the right are ACDC Taxis. If that makes sense to you, let's go ahead and start this up. We got three questions. What's ACDC's dominant strategy? What's Clifford's dominant strategy? And what will they do? If they have this information, what are they going to decide to do? Again, by the way, a dominant strategy is the thing they're going to do regardless of what the other person does. Okay, let's start this off in 90 seconds. Here we go. A lot of students have a hard time with this. I'm going to give you a trick. Here's the trick. What I want you to do is I want you to put a box around Clifford Taxi, which is the ones on the left-hand side. So if you put a box around these, this is going to help you remember that if you're looking for Clifford Taxi, you're looking at the box numbers. The numbers that don't have the box are obviously ACDC Taxi. Let's go to these questions. Good. What is ACDC's dominant strategy? Well, ACDC is the ones here, the ones on the right. Which one should they do regardless of what Clifford Taxi does? Let's find out. Take a look. If um, Clifford Taxi decides to maintain, what should ACDC Taxi do? Should they maintain and get 150 or should they get 110? Well, they should definitely go for 150. No doubt about it, that makes sense to me. Good, then how about if in this situation, Clifford Taxi decides to lower, which one should ACDC do? Should they maintain and get 120 or should they lower and get 100? Well, 120 is better right here. They should lower. Now, in both cases, whether Clifford goes maintains or lowers, they should definitely, ACDC should maintain. This is their dominant strategy. That ACDC's dominant strategy is to maintain. Done. Now, let's move on. What's Clifford's dominant strategy? Okay, let's find out that one. Well, if ACDC decides to maintain, which one's better? Now, we're looking at the red squares. 140 or 130. All right? 140 is better. So this is the one that they should do, the red, the red star. How about if ACDC lowers, right? If, if they lower their price, which one's better? Should they maintain get 120 or should they lower and get 150? Ah, they should get 150. In this situation, Clifford Taxi does not have one. There is no dominant strategy for Clifford Taxi. The next question is, well, what were they gonna do? Well, take a look. If you're Clifford Taxi, you don't have a dominant strategy, but you know exactly why, what ACDC is going to do. You know they're going to maintain. They have no incentive to go lower. So if they're going to maintain, no doubt about it, the question is, would you rather take 140 and maintain, or would you rather go lower and get 130? Would you rather go 140? So the scenario is going to end them right here, right? Clifford's going to maintain, ACDC is going to maintain, and we're going to end up right there. That's a concept. 90 seconds. Till next time. So yeah, that, that that was a good explanation of Prisoner's Dilemma. Um, so I think we'll close it up for today. Uh, great class, everybody. Thanks for all the questions and great participation. I was wondering, uh, does anyone else have any questions for today? Are there any other questions? No, Professor. Thank you. Oh, no problem. So uh, 
I'm putting up the I'm putting up uh, the quizzes right now for uh, McGraw, and uh, they will be for bonus for up to ten percent bonus marks total. And then we have we have uh, the test next week, and then the final exam on August eighteenth. So uh, any questions anybody has, feel free to uh, send me a message on WhatsApp. Um, yeah, and then I'll get back to you pretty quickly on that. Yeah, you too. Great. Thanks for, thanks for the questions, everybody, and uh, great work today. And, uh, yeah, just any questions you have, just uh, reach out, and I'll, I'll get back to you really quickly on uh, WhatsApp, but uh, I hope that everybody has a great day and great work today, everybody. So does everybody, uh, does everybody, anybody have any other questions? Excellent. Great job, everybody. Uh, thanks for the great participation and have a great day. Great class today, everybody. Thanks, thanks, Tanvi.